All right, we go to Edo State now where the governor, Godwin Abasaki, has tested negative for coronavirus but has decided to remain in self-isolation. In a statement, the special advisor to the governor on media and communication strategy, Kruso Sage, said the result is that of the rapid diagnostic test while the governor awaits the result of PCR test. According to him, the governor has decided to continue to work in self-isolation. Governor... Obasaki went into self-isolation and sent his samples for testing after two persons he met some days ago tested positive for the virus. Still in the virus, the Niger Center for Disease Control and CDC has raised an alarm over the activities of some Nigerians who are toying with the helplines dedicated to fighting the coronavirus. In a tweet on Thursday, the NCDC urged Nigerians to be civil and responsible in the way they go about reporting cases with regards to the virus using the dedicated phone lines. The health body said it received several messages and calls over an Instagram video. It noted that the individual was said to be very sick and reported that NCDC did not respond. According to them, on uh, reaching out to the individual, he said what he did was a skit, adding that he is well. The NCDC urged Nigerians to respect the call and message lines and advise that no one should spread panic. Uh, joining us to uh, expatiate a little on um, this is the Deputy Coordinator for the Young African Leaders Initiative, Yali Lagos Chapter, that's Chibweze Ewuzie. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. So the number of cases in Nigeria has increased and so has the amount of false information going around on social media. Um, starting with the Instagram post that was mentioned, what's your reaction to all of it? Okay, so um, first of all, I think the numbers that have been declared uh, you know, over the course of the last few weeks, I don't think it's a true reflection of you know, how widespread this virus is. Um, that is because um, testing is still limited to a few locations. So as the government starts to ramp up testing, definitely it would definitely expose um, you know, the, not the true figure of uh, uh, people who are um, affected Positive. by this uh, virus. Um, that being said, I mean, with the, with the popularity of social media as the tool for uh, information sharing, um, we have said this, we, we all would always see that people would want to use that to their own advantage, which would be to spread false um, information. Now, the impact of that is that it will cause chaos of course, it will cause panic. And we've started to hear reports of uh, people who have been self-medicating. Um, one of the rumors was that chloroquine was um, a drug that could cure um, the coronavirus. And it's, it's, so, it's baffling that people who are not even infect, infected by this virus are actually self-medicating with chloroquine. But, but how can you actually control such information, especially when it's coming from somebody as high as the President of the United States who went on national television and said that the FDA, who later came out and said uh, this, that information is incorrect. Mm. How can you, I mean, people tend to look up to their leaders. So when that kind of information is coming from such a highly placed person, and most times the people that get this information don't have an updated version of that information. So how do we manage such a scenario? Okay, um, in the case of the United States president, I think his reputation precedes him. Um, so I think anybody who's paying attention to him should kind of um, pay closer attention to the other bodies who are proficient in giving such statements. Um, he's not a medical professional, so definitely I wouldn't expect um, any of us to take advice from him on medical issues. Um, the, F the FDA is a reputable body, just like the NCDC. Um, so I think for Nigerians to be sure of where to get the right information, it is important that they go to the reputable organizations that are proficient in giving um, um, updates um, concerning this virus. Now, this, these are some of the problems that um, inspired the, young, the, um, the Yali group in Lagos to start the um, Yali Checks Challenge. Now, the challenge is basically to draw awareness um, or raise awareness um, on the amount of fake news making the rounds on social media. Um, through the stop, um, reflect and verify um, um, practice. Now, what that means is that whenever you see any form of information online, that it's important that you stop. Stop and reflect on it. Reflect on it by reading it, um, knowing that, look, the information that this um, 
um, this, this, inform this the information in this um, broadcast or whatever is actually true by verifying it. And you can easily verify by going to any of the reputable um, news agencies like um, the CNN, of course, Plus TV uh, would definitely be one of them, um, just so that you're sure that the information that you're about to share is actually the right information. So that would be you know, the way that we can stop this menace because I'll tell you, the, the fake news is actually another pandemic that is on our hands. Yes. And Let's I think we need to tackle the, that. The WhatsApp pandemic. Oh. The information <laughs> that flows from all corners. I mean, sometimes you get information and you wonder, the sources are actually people you should be kind of looking up to, Absolutely. to know better. Mm. They share this kind of information. So how can you tackle that part of it? And how possibly can people verify information that is passed on such uh, platforms? Okay, uh, so um, in reaction to people that you say are respectable and who are also sharing this information, um, we need to also just take a step back and understand that people are scared. Right? There's a lot of panic, you know, there's panic buying. And um, with that, people are, their senses, their, their sense of um, survival are heightened. So in a bid to be a step ahead, they tend to share information just for the sake of keeping everybody within their community safe. Now, the intention might be genuine, but then they are going for that to inflict more, you know, more chaos and uh, more panic by sharing these false information. So I think whenever those kind of things happen in whatever groups that we belong to, it's important that we should call the attention to the authenticity of that message and let them understand that, look, this is what this reputable body is saying about this particular message that you have shared. And I think you should uh, desist from sharing such information. I think with constant um, sensitization on how to deal with this, people would be more aware of when news, uh, news is fake. Or... Quick thoughts um, before we go on hoarding, because it seems a lot of persons are just stockpiling even things that they don't need enterprises on the roof. Um, what's your advice to Nigerians on that? Um, I think I'll just say, in all things, just do things in moderation. Um, it's important that we should also have a human face, even when we are trying to survive. Don't forget that there's somebody out there who needs the same thing that you, you do. So I think when we are purchasing all these things, I think it's just to you know, have a bit of empathy, you know, get as much as you, as you can manage for the two weeks that the government have already set aside, and not to you know, overbuy for, let's say, three months or six months. That would just be too much. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank coming you. on the news. Thank you.